we're going home on the side road, so hopefully it doesn't rattle around too much on you. Tammy and James, Q&A session. Adrian Espino says, what does a moral N slash 268 mean on a coat color test? So, depends on who you, whoops, depends on who you're using for a coat color test. Um, and animal genetics just tells you that they're moral or they're not. So it says, you know, you've got one copy on these dogs. I think this is probably vet gen who gives you a number. And the number is to do with uh, the markings, whether it's a tweed, a harlequin, a cryptic moral. They actually put a number with it. And I'm sorry, I'm not up with the numbering to tell you what 268 means uh, in terms of, but I think they do give you a reference point there. So, but that's what it's about. It's basically telling you the degree of merling that you that, that dog produces and give you an idea about what it might produce. Mariah Kemp says, does a, full, does a fluffy French Bulldog carry the fluffy gene automatically? Well, it's better than that. It carries two copies of the fluffy gene because fluffies, like most of these genes we talk about, it's double recessive. You have to have two cup copies for it to be in its phenotype. Pheno meaning physically shows it, as opposed to its genotype, meaning that it may just carry it but not exhibit it. So a single copy of Fluffy doesn't exhibit Fluffy. Now I'm gonna back that, I'm gonna back up a little bit here because we have seen a little bit of evidence on dogs that have a single copy of Fluffy because we produce quite a few, but do have kind of a coarser hair, don't they? Yeah, yeah. coarser hair, yeah. funny, funny texture feeling on right. the back. So, so Backs, right. the hair on the backs. So when I made the statement that it takes two copies to exhibit it, it certainly takes two copies to exhibit it to any extent, and it, and it will. But a single copy might show some degree of, uh, of a kind of thickening or of the hairs, maybe. So the answer is a full fluffy will have two copies and will come back like, you know, L1, L4, if it's a Frenchie, or L4, L4, L1, L1. No, no, that's another thing. Because what? we've had some that look like little lambs full of their fur, just full, and then we had some with the shorter hair to it, but real, real thick, you know, like Draco. It might be L1 or L4 either one, right? So we're talking yeah, about, they yeah. were both right. the same, right? It's the same. Yes. It's like, okay, so the there's not a difference. Yeah, so, so when we talk about the morals, there is a number there that they can associate with that. It gives you an idea about what the merlin might be. Not true of the of the coat length. Um, the L1, L4 doesn't tell you anything other than that it is a fluffy carrier. And I can tell you, there's in one litter, in full fluffy or fluffies, dogs that have got two copies in one for mum, one for dad, can show quite a bit of variation uh, that doesn't seem to tie to whether it's L1 or L4. Uh, Sarah Schilling, a good question here, Sarah. Could you tell us when an auction concentrator should be used? I know you always suggest having one, but I'm not sure when it's needed. Well, so the first question is, when would you have too much oxygen? And, and so the answer to that is, you know, we even have oxygen bars where you can go in, there used to be a ray, what, four or five years ago, where you could go into a bar and you'd have a little pipe there to be pure oxygen. You could have some of that it make you feel more clear-headed supposedly never been to one but supposedly look if you ever happen so the answer is you can't go wrong by administering it early it's not like other drugs that you definitely don't want to like for instance antibiotics you don't just start dishing antibiotics out unless you know what that you're treating because you can actually maybe mess things up a little bit and an example of antibiotics the problem is is that your gut or your puppy's gut is full of all kinds of anti all kinds of bacteria good ones and bad ones. And the problem is when you administer an antibiotic, you tend to generally wipe out all the, all the stuff that's in their gut. And uh, that can cause other problems. So, because what happens is a beneficial bug gets wiped out and replaced by maybe not a beneficial bug. So, but back to the oxygen. The answer is any time that you have a dog that's obviously having some breathing problems, time to go get it on some oxygen. So, one of the things would be a dog that's really in trouble that's starting to look blue in the lips that's definitely a candidate for immediate oxygen. Or you can get this kind of a dog puppy that's having problems breathing. It's short stroking on its breathing. Like, <laughs> it may be making a squeaky note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making 
cry, kind of what we call a death cry sometimes. That dog needs oxygen right away. So the problem is, is you never know. And by the way, on my series, my 12 part series, I'm going to grab my oxygen concentrator. I'm going to show you what it looks like, how we use it, how we test that it's working. We're going to cover this in some detail on this 12 part series. But the answer is, um, go get one. When you go buy one, the, the, and I don't want to knock Chinese products, but if you're buying a brand new one that costs 300 bucks, it's probably not going to be very good. And it probably won't do much concentration of oxygen at all. Um, you know, get down to maybe 36%. Well, the amount of oxygen in the air is like 17% or something. So you haven't really done that much. Versus an oxygen concentrator will get oxygen to maybe 96%, a good one. So what I've got, and what I recommend that you buy, is one of these used ones for humans that's bulky, it's on wheels, it weighs about 30, 40 pounds. And you can pick one of those up on Craigslist for 250 to 350 bucks, it'll buy you a pretty decent used one. And I'm in the video, I'll show you how you test one if you find a used one. But my experience has been that people who've bought the Chinese cheap ones on Amazon, uh, that don't work very well, and when you do what I call a toothpick test, you'll find they don't work. Uh, Libe Le L Baby Tutorials. So TCI, is it more effective than surgical? So we're talking about TCI's transcervical insemination. And uh, this is gonna be the last one thing. A transcervical insemination is where you take a a gun with a gun with a long piece of a solid pipe on the end of it that's about as thick as your finger. There's a hole in the middle of it so you can inseminate through it there's a light and a camera on the end of it and typically a little air supply so you can puff on the lens and blow any muck that you've collected as you pass it on. So with a transcervical insemination, well let's, I mean let's back this up, let's just talk about, let's just talk about three things that you could do here. You could do a natural mating, you can do an artificial insemination, you could do an artificial insemination by surgery which is called surgical AI. With a surgical AI you put the dog to sleep for a few minutes, you shave its belly, you make a little incision, you find its uterus, you pull out the, the uterus horns and you inject the semen directly into the uterus. You can't get any closer to where the eggs are than that. The problem with it is, is it's expensive, the dog has to go under anesthesia and there is a small but, but, there is a small but possible risk of getting infection. I'm not particularly hip on surgical inseminations. Um, a transcervical insemination is what you're asking about is where you have a TCI gun and you basically go in through the vulva to the plate and you actually can look at the camera to make sure you're in the right place. You can manipulate the AI tube to go up into what's called the OZ, which is basically the opening to the cervix, the opening to the fallopian tubes, well no, the opening to the uterus. And you can de deposit the, the semen in the, not actually in the horns that you would do the surgical, but damn close to it. I mean, within an inch of it. So. I think it's, it's as effective, it's safer, uh, and uh, it's less less impact on your dog. So I like TCIs. Um, so then the next question would be, is what would be best? Multiple vaginals or single TCI? And I think the answer to this is, is multiple vaginals beat a TCI. Uh, because you spread your window of opportunity, and if your numbers are off a little bit, you may not realize it, and I think that's a good reason why we have small litters, is, uh, is because we didn't get our timing right. And I'll give you an example of this. We just had a couple of litters in a row with 10 dogs in each. And they were done just with manually with a vaginal, a vaginal AI. But they were done on the numbers twice using our progesterone machine. That's sold on www.podreadersandwell. There you go. So um, I like, I like, um, I like uh, two vaginals two days apart. Gives you a better opportunity to get the numbers right. But, um, you know, you won't see any clinical information that really tells you what's going on. People will claim things like, you know, 8% more puppies, you know, these kind of things. Like, how the hell are they telling this? I mean, how would you know? What kind of a test can you do? I mean, you have to take an awful lot of data to know exactly what's going on with this. So the answer is, nobody knows. I don't like surgery if I can avoid it. Um, I like cheap and simple. You can do it yourself. Two vaginals, two days apart. We get good results that way. What else, Tammy? Just, you're still trying. To, you're still blood. trying to flog him, are you? Yeah, I'm still <laughs> trying. To, he needs a home. He was sold earlier on about when he was two weeks old. Yeah, I know. Customers, mom landed in the hospital. Yes. 
so like the whole priorities thing. went somewhere else than for puppies. So uh, we have him. He is fantastic. He doesn't have any white on his chest. He's a solid blue and tan boy. White carrier, meaning he carries cocoa, he carries cream. So he can make blue and tans, lilac and tans, um, chocolate and tans, and platinums. And the sad thing is he doesn't have any litter mates anymore. They've all left. I think he's with Mama still, isn't he? He's still yeah. with Brazil. Yeah. Mama's really plays. good, so he's still he with Mama. He doesn't try to nurse. She won't let him. Yeah. <laughs> she's but they dried are, up. But they are she's a dry cow. Yeah, but they are together, yeah. so, you know, it's, but, but uh, yeah. again, anyway. Yeah. And that, you know, he's this... He's full of life. He's a really pretty little puppy. Oh, he, and Daddy's 17, Mama's 16, and so he's going to be probably 17 pounds, too. Nice, small stud. Yes. To add to your breeding or, or, program, or just as a or just as a as a guy to have around the house. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We call me five eight zero seven nine nine one nine one zero. Give me a shout. I'm pressing the button. See you all, everybody. Bye. Watching the the video, uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here: I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.